All right, so last night, I hated missing this. And make no mistake, I would have been there had we not been here. But at the Cotton Bowl, it was the big night for soccer between Real Madrid and um, who was the other? Ass Roma. I think that's how it said. Yeah, yeah Roma. Bottom. Yes, Bottom Roma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bottom a big event out there last night, and I can scarcely think of anyone better to come on here and discuss it with us than the crew from the very popular hit show, Landmine World Cup. <laughs> wow. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It truly is. It is Andy and Peter back once again. Yeah. And you had that third, that rogue third that... You, you would frequently bring in. You never asked me to do this. Well, uh, wow, that's you... actually incorrect, Mike. I offered uh, very early, before the show ever aired, to let you become our Brazilian broad boob consultant and analyst, <laughs> and you, you uh, declined that role on the show. Sure. Looking back on it, that is a role I would have welcomed, and I think I would have excelled at. I Well, that's why I tapped you for that role, but yeah, that you were the only one for it. You said no thing. Well, I was still a soccer holdout then, Peter. But what now, can I tell you? Now he's all in. Yeah, now I'm all in, and I would have loved to have been there. So last night we had, from the photo at least, it was Andy. Hello, Andy. Hello, guys. Peter. Danny. Hey, now. Mark Folliwell. Mm-hmm. Dave Lane. Mm-hmm. Am I missing anyone else? Uh, we had some other, other folks that... I guess Groupies, we like to call them. Some new of friends course. that were made. Actually, I like to uh, just, it was bodyguards. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this thing's really gotten out of control for you guys, huh? Yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> so how was it? I'm I'm uh, sad I missed it, too. Was it, was it before the before we get to the incident at the near the end of the game, was it at least quality what you saw? Um, you know, I, I'm interested in hearing Danny's opinion on this, since this was actually his very first, like, real... Yes, Air Never been quote, to a game. legit first soccer ever. game, yeah. No, it was my first legitimate professional soccer match, and I equated the first half to pretty much watching paint dry. It seemed like they were about as interested in playing each other as a preseason football game. But once Roma got on the board uh, with a goal early in the second half, it seemed like interest increased uh, significantly on both sides, even more so when their starters came out and subs were able to come in because it seemed like they had a little more a little more interest in, in putting forth some effort. Yeah, so cause see, the second the, half was a blast. Yeah, the second half gets better because you take out most of the starters, the regular guys who are all half-assing it because they've got a whole season to worry about and they're not wanting to get injured. Um, and then they, they start throwing in the kids and the young guys, the reserve players who were all trying to, you know, fight for their place on the team and impress the boss. So they actually work yeah, a Yeah, they're trying harder. to show the coach something. Yeah, so this is really soccer's equivalent of to the NFL preseason. I'm just sad this was Danny's first game because the crowd lacked a lot of energy. It really wasn't a typical soccer game. Well, you crowd. don't know who, who do you... There's really no real vested interest in Dallas right. to root for either one of these teams. Well, in see, a meaningless game. Well, that's yeah. in, but that's, that's actually an interesting conversation because Real Madrid mm -hmm. is without question the biggest juggernaut of sport in the world um it, it they and they are hugely popular in yeah. the latino community uh in the asian community and, and the worldwide. asian community but fans there were there asian? for the spectacle yeah asian, asian. they're very really asian. that's a giant continent <laughs> did you know that when, when he, <laughs> he speaks the language i oh, do i forgot their language when, 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 <laughs> Them. Um, wow, when, when David Beckham, when they bought David Beckham, they actually paid for David Beckham's fee. Back then it was like $40, 50 million in three months with jersey sales to Asia only. In yeah. Wow. Months. So if you don't know who Real, Real Madrid is, it is uh, the club that the biggest soccer stars in the history of the sport have played for. I, the list is so long I can't even get into it. Um and it, just for example, they buy and sell players like you and I used to go to CD Warehouse and trade CDs and movies. So mm -hmm. They just do it on a whim. And after the World Cup this year, they bought two of the best players in the tournament. They bought Tony Cruz, the German midfielder, and then they bought the best player in the tournament, Thomas Rodriguez from Colombia, for 
$107 million. And that's just the fee that they paid the other club. That doesn't count his contract. Right. But Damn. but they've already they've already gotten back 25% of that through jersey sales. They've sold 400,000 James Rodriguez jerseys in the last what two three weeks two weeks two Dude, weeks. that is unbelievable considering what you know we talk about like Johnny Manziel and him having the number one selling jersey right yeah, now at least exactly comparing that number to what where Johnny's at I mean it, that number dwarfs it four hundred thousand jerseys in, a, in in two three weeks tops it's insane and here's the craziest part when the Cowboys Mavericks or Stars or Rangers buy a player we all instantly talk about where that player is going to play because that fills a need well for Real Madrid the biggest question is where is Yamas going to play because it, he doesn't really fit the formation they play and they've already got a bunch of other players that kind of play positions that he may play for them. So they just do it to do it. They just do it yeah. to do it. So that's why that, that's why the crowd you saw outside the Ritz Carlton was as it was the other night. Mm-hmm. That's why everybody's freaking out that Real Madrid's in town because they are a juggernaut. It's dude, insane. I'm telling you that video will will give you chills if you haven't seen it before. And Real Madrid did a really good job of putting it together. It's <laughs> I mean, it's it's out there. You can YouTube it, but I know it's on RealMadrid.com where they started filming it on the plane, uh, headed to Dallas, and then the reception that they got after you know when they landed and going into the Ritz was. It was, it, like was, the, it was like the Beatles. I mean, I mean yes, it was ridiculous for me to say that, but it really was a lot like the Beatles. There's people crying and trying to break through the line. It's 15, 20 people deep. It was ridiculous. Well, okay, so and and they had security intact at the Ritz. But it seems they didn't have security intact at the actual event. Well, yeah. So the Cotton Bowl, most people forget, back to the uh, old Dallas Burn days, access to field level at the Cotton Bowl ain't real difficult. Uh, in the farthest corners where the wall comes down, it's essentially field level, and it doesn't take much just to step over it. And one kid decided to step over it, and then a second kid decided to step over it, and then some adults and Male and female, uh, and before we knew it, there was twenty, twenty-five different. You it know, it was mostly teenagers though. I've mostly never teenagers seen anything running like that. I've, it was nuts. I've seen games in ten, fifteen countries, never seen that many, and those many invaders, and no fat chicks out there trying to take a selfie. There was anything? one. There was one. Yeah, uh, she wasn't. No, I think that was harsh was to call moved. her fat. She was thick. Nobody could catch her though. She was. <laughs> yeah, she was moving. Deadspin.com has has an article about it with like eight different views from different fan perspectives mm-hmm. from different angles at the stadium. It's great to watch. How but, long did it take for for that to take place? Six, what was the seven minutes? Yeah, about eight minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. let me ask let me ask you this. Was the clock still moving? Oh, oh yeah, of course. That sure. is so funny. Dude, time time expired, Corby, in the second half while they were still cleaning that mess up. And did they actually put enough extra time on there? I'm sure did. They did. It was okay. re- it, at one point I thought they were just going to call the game because it happened like the 87th minute. And who then won? Went, what was the score? Roma uh-huh. won one nothing. Okay. And, All right. Uh, <laughs> and Davy Lane was very proud of that fact. Yes, because and Davey, tried to incite a riot at Davey, the train station. Right. Davy, Craig, and myself. <laughs> pledged our allegiance to Roma on the essentially walking up to the Cotton Bowl. We picked the team that we were going to root for. By the way, we trained it. We were very, very Euro, Euro yesterday. Oh, yeah, we took the took dart rail from, from victory all the way down to the Cotton Bowl. Wow. And back. And back. Scarves and, back. and pints of beer. We're uh-huh. singing. That's, That's right. Pitchforks. That's, now, what, that's uh, what you get when you uh, go to a game with the landminers, by the way. Right. You get the full experience. You get the full European <laughs> yeah. experience. How, how white was the crowd? Were you guys like the only five? Not no. very. <laughs> no, I would I would say no. It was pretty eclectic, and brown. It was very brown. Yeah. <laughs> Three out of it was wow. like a nice bottle of Woodford <laughs> Reserve. Yes. It was that shade it was very a, much was a lovely color of Latino. Okay, and that's right. okay. I mean, okay, the, Real, okay. Real Madrid is incredibly popular. There was, and that was the nuttiest part was. The 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 attendance number was announced way lower Man, than yeah. it had looked. I it's, think they had t- tickets out on consignment. They they didn't fully count like, like more sold than they thought. And once those they got those back today, that, that number. But the price. Cotton Bowl is a proper 
soccer venue. Boy, oh my gosh, I miss amazing. going to soccer games at that place. Even it's when awesome, it was it? even when it was just like eight thousand people in there for the Dallas Burn, it was still the greatest place. Go that burn. field is uh, just uh, really soccer nirvana. For it's players. beautiful, it man. Really is. Field so, is how many people do you yeah. think were there last night? All told, we thought there was sixty, sixty-two, or yeah. plus. They only announced what fifty-seven. 57. Yeah, um, it looked bigger than that. Lower bowl completely full. Upper deck, thirty yeah. percent, twenty for twenty five percent. It looked did, really cool, though, man. How did they get that game away from uh, Cowboy Stadium? It's cheaper money. Okay, money and the field. Uh, the field. They're having some issues now when the Cowboys lay grass over the the turf. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're getting <laughs> word of mouth is spreading that it's a little bit, a little bit uh, hard. It's so bad inside the Death Star because they just take saw it and lay it on top of concrete, and it's too tight of a the confines are too small, and it's just. Yeah. It's not a good ex- – and then now, Ronaldo was there last night, and that was maybe the most interesting part of that whole event was watching him because he didn't play. He's still injured. He doesn't need to be there. He should be in some European spa getting a rhino placenta the injection most cheering, or something. And Most cheering in the first half was when they would put pictures. They'd put, up pictures, the- they'd put Ronaldo up on the screen. There and- were a handful of scoring chances in the in the, in the the first half, and like, like they said, when Ronaldo went up on the Jumbotron, you would have thought that – that Jesus was coming down from the heavens to visit his people. Right. What about Donaldo? Does he get any of this? Okay. He was No, you bus. made it. He stayed, you oh, made Mike. it 13 minutes, Mike. 13 quality minutes of hardcore soccer talk before you drop Donaldo. <laughs> Roma by the way stayed across the street from these very I'm studios. Sorry. No, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so one's at the Ritz, and uh, we're, we're, the R- Roma stayed at the where? At the, the W, right the across w. from. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. So, what do these two teams get paid to do this? Do we millions. know? Millions. Millions. Yeah. And that's why they do it. It's the, just like I said. It's the NFL preseason. Players, coaches hate it. Owners love it. They make crazy money, um, and. It it's not the best use of your soccer ticket dollar, in my opinion. But yeah. it's the only time you're going to see these teams probably in your lifetime, so you might as well go. All right, so who pays that fee? So there's a promoter. He he puts on this series of games. His name is Bob. <laughs> and so Real Madrid, Man U, they'll cost four or five million per game. <laughs> this is Maybe there's Italian a package guy. deal. Roma will cost a little less. But when you add up all the team fees, the travel, hotel... Ticket ticket sales pay for all that, and then they make their money with any sponsorship sales they they sell into and TV rights. So okay, so what what like what was the what was the average ticket? Oh, they were forty eight to a hundred and ninety dollars, probably fifty five. Yeah, fifty five. And that six. made up for the whatever yeah. ten million bucks. I bought my ticket um, about a month ago, I guess, and it was or maybe a couple of weeks ago, and I had an upper deck ticket, and it was like fifty, and the guy and the tickets that you guys had were I think were around seventy five, and they were and we were like on row forty right on the goal line. So maybe the ticket price seventy. Yeah, 70 they times, were probably yeah. a little higher. Now, just understand this: in a couple of days, Real Madrid will play Manchester United in Ann Arbor in front of like a hundred and ten thousand people in that college stadium. Uh, That's the big house, Corby, it, and it is sold out. I mean, it will be. Full to and it sold brand. out quickly, and too. it sold out very quickly. It, won't that be the largest audience ever ever to watch a soccer game in the U.S.? Or yes. does the Rose Bowl have that distinction? No, no th- th- that'll get it. When once they play the game and it becomes official, that'll be it. And you've got Liverpool and is that Man. This U? is uh, Man, City and, Man City and Liverpool, and they're playing at, at Yankee Stadium. Which is awful. Yeah. This they is a never ter- do that. and this is bad news because this is where the new MLS team NYCFC is supposed to play for f- the first two or three seasons. And this field is like a bowling alley. It's so narrow. It's embarrassing to see. But like see, Man, so. you, Man, you got eighty six thousand in L A. They played the Galaxy. So you know when you average out all the all the attendances, they'll they'll operations will be paid for and team fees and hotel lot will be paid for by ticket sales. They'll make a, a uh, yeah. crazy amount of money. I don't see how they can fit a soccer field in that little toy no, stadium a, that they have up there. I don't crazy. get it either. And nobody – and look, the, the league needed uh, a proper Manhattan team or, you know, island team for the league to get a, con- a TV contract, and so they kind of forced the deal, and this is what they got for now. They're building a stadium somewhere in New York. They just don't know where yet. Wow. But they couldn't put it in New Jersey or – Well, they already like have that. one of those. Oh, they do. Yeah, New York oh, Red okay. Bulls. They wanted to put it in Queens, and and the it got voted down finally by the mm. by the people. The people said no. 
We'll say that. Well, it for certainly another. sounds like quite a night, man. So much fun. I wish you guys could have gone, man. It was a blast. The, the look on on Danny's face when the pitch invasion happened, he was like a kid in a candy store. He was so excited. And when it was over, I turned and said, you ready to go? And he goes, no, wait. There's still some time left. I want to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to get you three guys out now to a proper soccer game. Yeah, look. You we're know, one we're, that means we're, something. We're going to plan a big FC Dallas retreat. I talked to, you know, we had a remote out there when when I rifled um, so many penalty kicks into um, <laughs> hey, so, not, by the way, not just you, Michael. Many corners of the net. I think the landmine guys have challenged you guys to a PK shootout with somebody good in goal, but I don't know if you guys really want to take us up That's on that. his idea, not mine. I just want to declare that publicly Oh, dude, now. we'd own you guys. <laughs> All There's right, no bring doubt. It. Bring it. Anyway. But, yeah, so we talked to them. We talked to them about, the, you know, just putting uh, something together in a meaningful game. So, yeah, we'll, we're, we're for sure going up there and going to do it the right way. All right. Cool. All right. Boys, it's good to talk to you. Good to talk we to miss you. miss you. Life is not the same. Yeah, good to have you guys yeah. back. I just marched in here and sat my butt down right here in that chair. Just it like felt it was real, hat. didn't it? It felt natural. Oh. Every day when at 7.02. Did it cup your buttocks in that way that it normally it's does? It's this weird mix of Jub Jub and Reiner Butt all mixed into one. It's pretty <laughs> Reiner wonderful. Butt. I miss the Reiner banter. Butt. <laughs> I miss the banter. Gotta go. All right. Thank you Very good. That up. is the I love you. Landmine World Cup, boys. Peter and Andy. It is 6.54 here on the ticket.